Okay, here we are again. I, I still have yet to find a name for this entire series, but we're pushing forward. I'm talking to members or people who are running for um, a seat on town council in Harpers Ferry. I am graced with the fabulous presence of a man <laughs> named Storm, uh, which I, I wanna ask you about here in a second, but how are you today, sir? I'm well, thank you, Colin, and thank you for uh, this opportunity to talk with you. <laughs> So how did you come about Storm? Was Storm always your name? Uh, let's see, I'll start with the story I like to tell, but is not true. So okay. I'm just gonna have to prime <laughs> you with that. So when my mom was carrying me, oh, Harper's Ferry, train going by, hold for train. <laughs> One more. Come on. There it is. Okay. <laughs> It's a chatty one. Okay. So when my mom was carrying me, she was struck by lightning. So when I was born, it was a natural thing to name me. Um, and this is the untrue one? story. That's the untrue story. That's, <laughs> that's the one I tell so that the truth sounds, you know, I've given you at least something that's exciting. <laughs> that the truth is I was a teenager in Gaithersburg, Maryland, uh, working at a produce stand that had plants and I was assigned the job of watering the plants and I, I, I didn't care for it. So I just doused the heck out of them uh, because I thought that would be a fun thing to do. Turns out they needed that kind of dousing. And so they, uh, they more or less called me the human thunderstorm storm. Yeah. My friends picked up on it. Um, that's where I gained my work ethic after realizing, oh, you're, you're rewarded for, for doing a good job of watering the plants. And uh, yeah, by the time I met my wife, uh, hit college and the rest, I was Storm. Wow, that's that's a good story. It's not <laughs> as, as interesting as getting hit by lightning, but it's it's a good second place. No, another. I'll tell you another time how I got my superpowers. That's it. Wasn't struck <laughs> by lightning. Totally different. It wasn't a spider bite. Totally different. <laughs> um, well, speaking of superpowers, this is the first question I ask everybody. You must have a superpower to want to run for town council in Harper's Ferry. <laughs> so why, sir, do you want to be on, on the town council? Why are you doing this? Uh, well, I answer the first question. I feel like my superpower is listening, ah. that um, I'm not coming from a fixed point or perspective. I definitely have a great love for Harper's Ferry since um, the 1970s. I've been coming here first as a child through college all through my adult years, my wife and I together, and it's always captivated me. I've heard it described as you have your Harper's Ferry moment. And I, <laughs> I had mine as a child. And so I definitely have great love and have gotten to know the history so well. I've stopped reading uh, fiction and TV because I'm just reading about Harper's Ferry, Jefferson County, all its eras. Uh, and now the town itself really studying up, reading through the minutes back to 20, 2007 uh, and every document I can get my hand on. But all of that is so that um, when I'm out canvassing and talking to people and talking to my friends and neighbors that I'm going to be able to take in everybody's ideas in the context of what I've learned secondhand and hopefully um, make good decisions that will improve all of our lives and help the town thrive. Is this the first time you've run for public office? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. I never imagined I would, and I don't imagine I would ever run for any public office outside of this town. Frankly, I've never had any interest in politics other than growing up in the DC area and just it's in the air. And in fact, the first person that my wife and I met when we started to look in earnest for a home here, we asked him, what one piece of advice or what advice would you give to someone moving to Harper's Ferry that be good, useful advice? And we're thinking, oh, they're going to they're gonna say, OK, this is the place to get your groceries or you should, you know, talk to, to, to Ned and Stacy or whatever. <laughs> and he said, don't get involved with politics. <laughs> so this was a few years ago and um, and I wasn't going to, but it just seemed like um, that that. I feel like I, I do have something I can bring to help the town now. So you've been bitten by the bug. <laughs> the Harper's Ferry bug, yes. Sure. yes. Would you ever want to be mayor? 
maybe, um, maybe eventually. I feel like even as much as I've learned and studied and uh, met friends here, I, I don't feel like that's a responsibility I could take on. And also, um, it's a serious time commitment, even as a town council member. And that was a big question that I asked myself because I'm one of four partners that runs a business. Um, I'm still a performing artist as well, somewhat. I don't tour like I used to. So, um, and I feel like being mayor of Harper's Ferry would be an even deeper time commitment, at least to do it the way um, I would want to do it. You know, I don't want just to be filling a seat and checking a box. I, also, I want to be informed on what's happening. I want to be out listening and hopefully bringing ideas in, um, synthesizing them from what I hear. You said you're a, you, you tour, you're a performance artist. What's that about? What do you do? <laughs> I do a lot of things. Um, the biggest thing I do with my time uh, and most of my income is a, an event that I, an annual event that I help produce that uh, we rent a cruise ship uh, one, for one week every year. And we fill it with our own entertainers. Uh, we book it ourselves, the menu, everything, every last thing. Imagine, imagine planning a party or a large wedding and multiply that by 100. It takes all year to plan it. We do have uh, staff and contractors that help us with it. So that's the biggest thing that I do with my time now. But I'm also um, a singer and songwriter. I'm about to start writing for um, the 13th season of a show called Mystery Science Theater 3000, which used to be on cable and now is funded through um, Kickstarter. So I'm in the entertainment field and business fields at the same time, uh, way back when I was in finance in the corporate oh. world. <laughs> That's um, a lot different. Finance and the, the sort of artistic world, they seem to collide on some level, I would think. Everything makes sense in hindsight. Uh, my first um, professional performing um, gig was an a cappella group. Uh, quit my career in finance in order to pursue it and it went well, but you find that, um, I feel like if you're doing it right, everything that you do, you learn from it and you carry it forward. And if I hadn't had all of that experience in finance, it would have been much harder to make a living as an entertainer. And that happens to a lot of creative people that they're very good with, you know, maybe they're talented or they have the drive and they have a great idea and they pursue it, but no sense of how to pull it together uh, so you know what your objective is, where you want to end up and what you have, but how to get from here to there. And that's actually one of the things that I feel like I can help the town with. Well, that that kind of that to me bleeds into perhaps one of the, the more. I don't know, tumultuous questions to ask, which would be <laughs> my experience, the Harper's Ferry is pretty divided. Um, how how do you think you can help bring people together and, and kind of not be, because it's not just divided, it's heated and divided. Mm -hmm. how, how, how can you remedy that or help remedy that? Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, of course you're referring primarily to the Hilltop House yeah. development. Yeah. Um, I've been walking around, in addition to talking to my friends and neighbors, uh, I have been walking around and meeting new people and talking with them. There are actually a lot of people who are not, uh, haven't chosen a side. I feel like um, I'm newer here. I use, I've been using the, on my sign, it says a fresh perspective for Harper's Ferry. Part of that is I haven't been here uh, for through the extent of it. I've read about it, I've studied it. I've talked to people who felt passionately um, on every side of the issue, but that I feel like my view is objective to it. And I know that um, for some, I have spoken in favor of uh, working with the developer uh, and not against the developer. And that for some, I know that they may feel like I've chosen a side. I don't feel that way. And that I feel like there are more commonalities to everybody or almost everybody than, than differences. And there are differences, I think, in what it means to preserve the history, to preserve, um, to preserve how we live here. Uh, one of the biggest reasons I love being here, I lived in um, Arlington for about 20 years and it, it, was, it was nice, but just because of how it is, um, the pace 
of people's lives, why they chose to live in Arlington, that I, I didn't have nearly as many friends in that entire time span, like people I would hang out with or just stop and chat with on the street than I have in our three years here in Harpers Ferry. So I don't want to lose that. And I don't want to lose all the things that I fell in love with when I first came here in the 70s and all this time. And certainly there are realities uh, that come with modern times, but that doesn't mean you, you drop everything, especially not in Harper's Ferry. So I think the challenge is to, to make it work in a way um, that jibes with modern reality, but preserves what's at the heart of Harper's Ferry. And in terms of Hilltop, I do feel that the developer is now um, in earnest when they say that they want to be responsible stewards of the site on Magazine Hill, um, but that we need to, as a town and individually, it will be my responsibility as a council member to make sure that they are living up to what they agreed uh, agreed to in Ordinance 2020 2021-2 in which they laid out, okay, we promise we're going to have these two overlooks and we're going to maintain them. Um, just a very long list of things that they set down in writing that transcend um, the, the state law that the tourism development law. So uh, I understand why people are passionate, but I do feel like it's coming, Hilltop is coming and that, um, that we need to build trust amongst ourselves here in town and also with the developer and recognize that they can be a partner in town. Um, but it's got to be baby steps to build that trust together. You, you use the phrase modern reality when in your answer and modern reality anymore is polarized that I mean, it, from the top to the bottom, national to local, wherever it's very much you're on one side or the other. Like you said, you, you can have an opinion about the hotel, but if it's one opinion, even though you consider yourself neutral, there is a side, another side that will say, no, 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 you're on that side then. So we're going to dismiss everything that you say. Spin that forward a little bit and you get to the current council. Have mm -hmm. you looked or have you kept up with the council meetings over the past months, maybe years? I, I don't know. I mean, you've been there three years, maybe for all three years. What is your impression of the current council? Have you heard some of those arguments and it does get contentious sometimes among that governing body? Have, is there a way to kind of circumvent that? Should you, you know, be elected to town council? Would you engage in that type of rhetoric? Um. Well, I'm generally pretty even handed and <laughs> I, I feel like there are examples on the current council. Of course, the council I'm going to be be part of is not likely to be one that's on the whole contentious. Yeah. Uh, the town council is, of course, not the whole town. I think yeah. it's important that that um, to always have an open ear. Um, that said, I do feel like when people are are in earnest and, and genuinely are looking for a way forward that that you can keep the dialogue reasonable. And I feel like um, if someone comes to me and they're upset about something to, you know, it, maybe they're trying to incite me to take a deep breath and think about what they're saying and, and think about it. And in some cases, I may be persuaded when I'm walking around, I have more things in my head and more perspective than I did before. And I think that's valuable. And I actually feel like there, there aren't just two sides, that there are a lot of people, um, and going back to my anecdote about the advice that I got to not get involved in politics, I took that to heart. Um, like I was afraid to even step up to join the tree committee for fear of landing in a minefield. And I feel like there are a lot of people who don't want to be forced into one side or another, but that do want to, to have their opinions heard or do want to just contribute in a small way. And I'm hoping that if the tone comes down, um, that even when you disagree, you shouldn't be contentious. You know, you shouldn't be looking for a fight. You should be looking to advocate for what you believe or what you believe um, is reasonable. Um, if there are fears, it's good to express them, um, but then to, to look at them rationally and, and determine what, what is true, uh, what we know, what we don't know, 
and for things you don't know to try to get more information and then make the best decisions you can. What do you think is the biggest issue uh, confronting Harpers Ferry currently? Is it infrastructure? Is it uh, the water treatment plant, which I know is getting an upgrade? Is it the hotel? Which, which one of these things is most important to you? I, well, you know, it, it sounds like a dodge, but they're all of a whole. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will say that, yes, infrastructure is something I've actually started working on um, with a couple of folks. And um, there, there may be funding coming down um, through the state or through federal government for infrastructure, depending on how things go. So I feel like the greatest challenge for this town is to, to be able to prior, prioritize and triage the town's needs, both in terms of the infrastructure, um, growing tourism, and how it will impact the people that live there and find a way to balance it. And so far, because it's been so contentious over the years and because the finances have been shaky, it's only been possible to address things in a piecemeal fashion. And that the amount of energy it has taken every council member and the mayor, everybody, just to deal with Hilltop has siphoned off so much of the energy that should be spent um, looking at and hopefully solving all of these, these issues. And absolutely, um, one of the biggest things is simply the sidewalks that we have so many people coming, which is great, and, and parking throughout the town um, and hopefully enjoying the town as well as the park, but that a lot of the sidewalks, um, there some are cracked, uh, certainly not ADA compliant, uh, are missing entirely. And I think that's an example of how um, you brought up the thing I brought up, which is matching um, history with modern day reality. And I believe that uh, it's a false ch choice to say you have to choose one or the other. Like Harper's Ferry, it's a patchwork historic look. And that's almost its definition, that there are so many layers and eras here dating back uh, 200 years and more. And there are glimpses of it everywhere, and sometimes they're intermixed. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, absolutely, do not want a town where you just say, "Okay, it's it's Disneyland," and and this is we've decided this is the Harper's Ferry look. Um, but at the same time, uh, something like ADA compliance, so that anybody with a mobility issue is going to be able to come and enjoy themselves. Uh, here in Harper's Ferry and not have to worry that, you know, there's a six inch curb that they can't get over and have it be a big deal. And there are a lot of models out there now, unlike 10 and certainly 20 years ago, for how to uh, bring things up to ADA compliance in a way that doesn't scream uh, modern, that you can use materials and methods that blend in to what exists. So you can, in many cases, achieve both things. Watching from afar, what are two, the two things here? What are some of the, the things you think the current government, the current council and mayor have done well? And what are some things you think they could have done better and, and some disappointments throughout the past two years? <laughs> Talking about the past two years, the, the, the biggest thing that the council could have done was apply the law properly and count the votes. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, that was the thing um, that just, the, that was the thing that said, yeah, I, I have to speak up. Mm -hmm. um, that following the law and operating with integrity is something that wasn't done, I feel, um, for much of that time. And then when they did count the votes um, after the, the, the lawless actions um, and the Supreme Court said to count them and then they finally were, I feel like this council has in a relatively short period of time cut down to, gotten down to business. And um, I feel like this council has been more even handed about looking at what the facts on the ground are and analyzing them um, and moving forward. But I, it's sort of a, you know, a what if game. We don't know what the past two years would have been like if that election had been properly vetted. So then I guess, I guess what I'll, I'll, I'll ask this question and then uh, I'll ask a few fun questions because I know it's not that this hasn't been fun because this has already been a ton of fun, but we'll get to some lighter questions uh, after this. Uh, 
if you do not end up on the winning end of things with this election, would you consider running again in a couple of years? I'm not sure. I feel like I'm a winner just because I get to live here. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I would, and I and I am involved now. I'm, I'm a board member with the Harpers Ferry Bolivar Historic Town Foundation, and um, I love the work I'm doing with them. Uh, we're about to introduce a um, a Black Heritage walking tour. It's really exciting. Uh, so I feel like, and I would love to get involved in some other way. I don't feel like it's an either or. If I'm if I'm not on the council, I feel like there are other ways I can contribute. Whether or not I would want to be a town council member, I'd say maybe. Um, part of why I stepped up was no one had entered to become a town council person, and I'm like, a town can't function if people don't step up and do things. Yeah. So I did. So I don't know. I feel like if um, if things do start to normalize, if people do engage honestly and openly and that things start to get done for the town in a positive way and people see positive change and they're they're happy with how things are going or if they're not happy that we find ways to uh, to overcome differences and more people step up and become involved and talented people step forward i am more than happy not to to spend the, what i know is going to be uh, dozens of <laughs> hundreds of hours uh working for the town it'll be my pleasure to do it uh, but I do see it as, as serving the town. You said you've been there for three years. Do you foresee yourself moving again somewhere down the line or do you wanna be in Harper's Ferry for the rest of time? I feel like I wanna be here for the rest of time. So yeah. I've always lived in the region um, and it just feels natural. And, um, and that's why I hope it, it never radically changes. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I love it here. Okay, so now this is this is how I start this portion off with everybody. I'm coming to Harper's Ferry. All I want is a good meal. Where should I go? Where would you recommend? Okay, so all right, I'm a little biased, but uh, my favorite restaurant it's actually it's actually in Bolivar. It's Kelly Farm Kitchen. Okay, um, and um, um, my my wife and I we're not entirely vegan, uh, but we do have. <laughs> A heavily plant-based diet. That's not the reason I say that. Uh, it's just I would call it down-home plant-based food, uh, like chicken and waffles and burgers, in a very friendly environment and fresh. Uh, so that's a favorite. Um, I love to go to the barn. Uh, I like the rabbit hole. Uh, You're and, listing uh, everything now. <laughs> I love this place. I can probably give you a rundown of just about every every store restaurant maybe not every every dish at every restaurant but i i literally like my friends who don't live in harper's ferry and i have a lot of friends around the country they know that if they start me on harper's ferry i'm not going to stop like <laughs> whether it's the, my friends here or the restaurants or especially the history that uh, that that it's pretty deep so as an artist and, and a musician at that of course, I, I have to ask you what what in your life is the best concert you've ever been to? Been to, okay. You've ever attended, yes. Huh, huh. Hey, I've never been asked that. Um, <laughs> best concert I've been to. Best concert. Okay, I got it. Sure. Um, it wasn't a concert, so I'm gonna cheat <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in I don't believe in the the the, the Kobayashi Maru scenario the no win. Uh, it was a um, an interview with Weird Al Yankovic, really, uh, who is a hero of mine. Really, so, yes, uh, and I've had the, the 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 pleasure to to do shows with a couple of times, and honestly, about the nicest person on earth. <laughs> no, did you open for him or? No, 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 just a brief appearance as part okay. of the show. Um, but uh, I remember he he hadn't had an album out for a while and he agreed to do this, this onstage live interview and getting to hear him talk about his career uh, in this very candid way. And I'll also say his show, he's a legit rock star. Yeah. People who, people who, uh, and I say rock star, I feel like a rock star is someone who 
who they care deeply, but they don't care. Like, yeah, yeah. You say, oh, your hair's too long, or you're goofy, or you know, or you're so serious, whatever it is, <laughs> you're just going for it. And yeah. and I'm not there, but I, I really <laughs> admire that. <laughs> and so I feel like uh, uh, that's going to be my answer. Okay. You know? well, well, then, what's your favorite Weird Al album? We'll say. Oh gosh, Running with Scissors. So I, okay. I just have to have to pick one. <laughs> I, Running with Scissors is great. I, and th there was um, Bad Hair Day as well. Do you remember Bad Hair Day? Oh yeah, that was that was one of one of my favorites. That, that's great. Do you, can you play the accordion at all? <laughs> Not a bit. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can make sound with one. I'm mostly a guitarist. I can play some keys. Can play bass guitar. Basically, if you can play a guitar, there's a whole range of things that you can at least make sound with. Yeah. But no, that's uh, that's a. Um, uh, that's like a upper level uh, sorcery uh, to me to be able to play uh, the way he does virtua in a virtuosis vir virtuosish way. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a favorite book? Oh gosh, that's always that's always switching around. That's all, that's tough. Yeah, yeah. Like lately, it's been all nonfiction um, and, and histories of the town mostly. Um, Midnight Rising, uh, as far as books about uh, the John Brown raid, uh, though of course the town is so much wider than that, but that's a great one that I point people to. Um, um, I love I love the George R. R. Martin um, books, all of those. And um, oh, actually, that's a story. Uh, okay. I'll... No, we got we got we got time. What what's the story? Okay, this is the story of the time that George R. R. Martin broke my guitar. Wow. Yeah. I, I can I can all but guarantee you not a single other council candidate is going to begin a story with that sentence. So go ahead. All right. So I'm also in a mu musical comedy duo called Paul and Storm. I'm the storm part. And <laughs> we have a song that uh, is called George R. R. Martin. Uh, it's called Right Like the Wind. Open line is George R. R. Writing, George R. R. Martin, write and write faster. You're not going to get any younger, you know. Winter is coming. I'm growing impatient, and you still have uh, two whole darn books left to go. So write <laughs> like the wind. So this, we wrote it like 10 years ago, and it, it, it's still valid. He still hasn't finished the series. Sure. And um, it really, uh, in, in the nerd world at least, it caught fire. Uh, did I mention I'm a nerd? Um, and <laughs> And um, we, we used to go to Comic-Con in San Diego every year and put on a show called Wootstock where we had a lot of our friends um, doing, who do incredible things. And it was almost a vaudeville presentation where each act would come out and do 10 minutes of whatever they wanted to do. Uh, and usually um, there were four of us that, that opened the show and that year was, uh, was um, a year when we were finally able to convince George R. R. Martin to, to drop by. Um, I'm getting, gonna go off on a tangent, uh, but no. And so he agreed to do it. And we were like, oh, it'd be funny if you, if you, you know, kind of came out and glared at us when we sang that song. Cause of course it, he likes this, he liked the song, but uh, of course he got so many emails saying, did you hear the song? Did you hear the song? So he said, uh, uh, also so incredibly nice. Um, now I don't I don't want to be a bother, but I have an idea. Uh, would it be okay if I don't know? Do you have like a, a spare guitar that I could smash? Yeah, <laughs> and we're like, yes, yes, <laughs> George R. R. Martin. <laughs> we do, and of course we had to. We went out and got one, <laughs> just from Best Buy. Used to sell beginner guitars, and um, so uh, we went out and started the song. And then he comes out onto stage as we're singing and the audience is going nuts because they recognize who he is right away. And then uh, came over and we kind of raggedly stopped the song and he gestures to me and I hand him the guitar, he slams it down and bam, stomps on it. And, uh, and then another friend of ours, an author named Neil Gaiman came out and, uh, and uh, basically scolded us for giving poor, poor George R. R. Martin a rough time. So I still have the, the piece of guitar that I keep up in my, uh, my recording space as a reminder of that day. You, you've got to be the coolest guy in Harper's Ferry. 
No, 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 not by a long shot. Uh uh. You have these are incredible stories. We're gonna have to do a separate interview, not talking about politics at all. We're gonna have to do that some (laughs) some somewhere down the line. Wow. And oh. I, that doesn't even compare to my final question. This is going to be <laughs> lame, but I was just going to ask, are you a, a do you prefer uh, wine, beer or liquor? Oh, wow. Well, I think you know me well enough by now uh, <laughs> from this interview to know that at different times, I prefer one or the other. <laughs> and that certainly on a, on a cool day uh, or on a hot day, a hot day, a cool beer is the thing. Okay. I would say um, I, I don't drink frequently, uh, but on like a Saturday night, if it's it's just uh, uh, me and Mrs. Storm at home, I might just make a make myself uh, a little mixed drink and just kind of sip on that. Well, which would, drink do you prefer, like an old fashioned or anything? Old fashions. I love bourbon based drinks. I love uh, Catoctin Creek's bourbons um, okay. over over in Purcellville. So uh, uh, yeah, in fact, I was very excited. I was able to get my hands on. Um, on one of their, um, they, they have their maple bourbon, uh, that there's maple syrup that they mm. infuse the bourbon with that, that's really, really nice. And they only make a limited amount each year and I managed to get myself a bottle. That's good, <laughs> that's good. And um, I, I like to, to end too with, if, if you have, do you have a website or a Facebook page that you can direct people to for the campaign? Uh, I, when I was doing Charlestown people, this, was wild it blew my mind but everybody gave out their personal cell phone numbers i do not advocate for that i don't understand it i don't want anybody to have my number but if that's what you'd like to do with this platform you have every right to do so is there anything people should know um i i haven't listed my any i haven't put anything up on socials just because i am a a public person Mm -hmm. and i didn't want all my fans jumping in on it and all that stuff like i'm in this for harper's ferry yeah. And in fact, to this point, I, I have no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to share this video then? Is this going to be, or are you trying to keep everything secret? I'm not trying to keep it secret. <laughs> I, I don't want it to influence, influence um, the dynamic uh, as I'm running. Uh, but people can email me at storm4hf.com, S T O R M either F-O-R or the number four. Uh, I made sure I got both of them. Uh, and then eight, letter H, F for Harper's Ferry at gmail.com. And I have heard from a couple of people from there. And um, if you write me, even if you are not happy with what I'm saying, I, I especially want to hear from you um, because uh, it's, it's better to engage, I believe. So yeah. please do contact me. This has been an absolute pleasure. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time. Um, Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna be emailing you to set up a three and a half hour conversation about Weird Al Yankovic one day. So be on the lookout for that. (laughs) Well, I would say uh, I would love. There's some amazing musicians here in town. Really, there's tremendous talent here, uh, and that if there's a way to uh, to 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 elevate them as well, that would be terrific. Yeah, I would love I would love to know where all the good music in Harper's Ferry is. So I'll, I'll probably be asking you about that too. But um, good luck with the election. And and again, thank you so much. We will be talking soon. Um, and if, if you win, we'll do this again. And if you don't win, we'll do it again. <laughs> that sounds great, Colin. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I had a good time. Awesome questions. Too. Thank you so much. We'll see you later. <laughs>